Hey, welcome to the latest episode of, well, I guess this is co-videos, because that we today we watched uh, Dune, which if you have HBO Max, you can just watch right at home and skip the theaters, which I did. Uh, me, me as well. Yeah. So, I mean, why go to the theaters when you can just sit on your couch and watch a movie? I mean, you know, it, that whole thing about um, getting up and running to the bathroom and then missing some parts. Like, there's, yeah. a, there's an app built around, like, when the slow parts well, yeah, of the movie happen, so you yeah, can get up and go pee. When to pee or whatever whatever it's called. I can straight up pause it, go make a sandwich. Yeah, which, I mean, for a two and a half hour movie, I, I had to pause it. Yeah, well. And just think that I would have had to buy tickets for this movie twice to see the parts I missed. I just wouldn't have. So I take it you didn't like the movie. I was just bored. Really? Yeah. Did you at least think it was pretty? Some parts of it were. I mean, like when they show the sprawling um, overview of the city, and it's all built out of the same rock that the mountain is, as you would expect, because I mean, there's only one type of rock right. on, on this planet, and it's all beige. So they're so showing me sprawling beige with slightly shadowed beige to be like, look how amazing this beige city is. I'm like, uh-huh. Okay. I guess I can't argue with that. I mean, I, but and then you just had, I mean, there were cool visuals and stuff. But so I guess in this series, we kind of review movies that you can watch straight at home during a um, if if there's ever a you know global incident in which you can't really leave your house for like a year and a half. Uh, what are you going to watch? You can't go to the theater. The way, the way we've been handling it, um, this should stay relevant for at least the next four years. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, to, will we watch a Dune, and do we want to give a brief thought and then go into spoilers afterwards? Yes. Okay. So, I guess, um, I mean, I was bored through it, but I was bored in the, what is it, the 80s movie as well. Mm. Um, I just think I'm, I just think Dune's not for me. You know, I had the same opinion of it. Like, um, I had watched the uh the one that was back in 84 mm -hmm. um it was directed by no nah, i don't i don't remember amber david lynch, david lynch yes okay um i knew that i I, love, I i didn't know that i love twin peaks but I'm, I'm blanking right now but anyways uh yeah david lynch directed it which is honestly a really odd choice for that movie because i i know that dune's supposed to be like a little bit weird it's supposed to have kind of like a you're supposed to look at it from like another point of view because they try to make it seem like it's, you know, far flung space. The things we do now aren't the things they do there. Well, I mean, just the date on it was like one hundred one ninety two, so it's pretty far in the future. Yeah, yeah. Um, but like uh, the uh, the old school one with like Sting and everything. You know, I didn't like it, mm -hmm. and being a nerd around other nerds who yeah. just love that property. It was something that I kind of like, you know, I, I, I treated Dune like politics. I just stayed quiet about it. Didn't talk about it, you know, too much. Yeah. Um, because it's like Doctor Who. I'm not a Doctor Who fan. Yeah. Um, but there there are there are episodes that pique my interest. I think I'm the same way where you watch some of it and some of it's good and some of it's like kind of okay and some of it's bad. Well, I mean. And then you either into the characters or you're not. Well, when when the when the giant fans of the show are telling you, yeah, there's a lot of bad episodes, but there's some good ones. It's like, you know, it doesn't sound like that's something that I really want to do, you know. And then there's so much of it because there. I've also been told you don't have to go back and watch the old school stuff. You can like start from this doctor, and it's like, well, I, I like to experience a whole thing. I'm the same way, which is why I've put off watching like Supernatural and shows like that that are like. 12 seasons and people were like oh you can skip this season through this season or just start immediately like in the middle and and go on from there and while that i need to know all of it i don't want to just start in the middle and assume i'll catch up i want i want i want to experience the story like in its entirety or not at all yeah or Am start it and decide i don't like it and then just stop yeah amber really wants me to watch um supernatural i've watched a lot of episodes she's she's shown me enough that really piques my interest um, there's an episode you showed me where, like, the the bonehead on the show, uh, mm -hmm. Dean, he, like, dies over and over again. It's like a Groundhog Day episode. Okay. And it was fucking hilarious. Mm. But I know that there's an overwhelming amount of episodes. And she finally was like, watch the first three seasons. And that's really all you have to watch. Like, the rest of it's just kind of, like, I guess extra. Okay. Because the show is so popular, it just kind of kept going. But apparently, like, the first three seasons are the one that, that tells... Um, 
I'm sorry, I've been corrected. Apparently, it's the first five seasons. Five. Um, <laughs> All right, two more, two more seasons. Yeah, yeah. But it was just daunting. But like, I've been watching them here and there. I'm trying to get caught up on the show. Um, but I it's like, am I probably going to watch to the end? Unless it really hooks me, I don't think so. Um, well, I guess that's how I feel about Dune. Yeah, yeah. no. And, and I know we just got off on a little um, sidetrack there. but I, I mean, I think it's relevant in that it's you have things that pique some people's interest and i could see why people would like this movie mm. i mean it's pretty in parts i mean it's acted fine mm-hmm. there's definitely a lot of lore it's kind of like if so you threw someone down who had never watched lord of the rings and like we're watching the extended editions all of them right now right not everyone is going to be into that not everyone needs more lord of the rings three and a half hours later in the first movie dude it's some, seriously how much more is there so you're not enjoying yourself yeah <laughs> I, I mean some people like if you just watch the theatrical version whatever that might be enough maybe they don't want to discover all the all the little bits and pieces of the lore they don't want to watch the extra 45 minutes of walking yes and i didn't want to watch the hour and a half of uh starting up dune i mean we could have condensed that to like 15 minutes and moved along i think well i loved it (laughs) i thought it was fantastic um Amber and I sat on the couch last night and we watched it. And I got to tell you, the movie blew me away. Mm. Like, it was it was one of those ones where you go into it with kind of like a, a, a sour feeling in your gut. Like, there's this cloud of doom. Just because I remember the old David Lynch movie. And it was mm. just kind of like I wasn't into it. Um, going into this one, it was kind of like, okay, this is going to bore the tear out, tears out of me too. Because mm-hmm. I thought it was I thought I was set up for like the... They did the, the second Blade Runner movie. Yeah, and the second Blade Runner movie was stunningly beautiful, but it was also stunningly boring. I've not in, watched that one yet. In my opinion, that's it's, no, it's not really a spoiler, but um, and I, I got to tell you, I was wowed. Hmm. I was really wowed by this movie. Um, okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and get it out of the way. I I give it easily a nine out of ten. Wow. Um, I thought it was. I thought it was gorgeous. I thought the acting was great. Um, the CGI in the movie I thought was flawless. Like that's the first time I've ever watched a movie that's been like on that grandiose of scale of like CGI, mm-hmm. and you didn't feel like there were things in it that was just like, oh, that looks bad, and that looks bad, and that looks bad. I thought everything looked amazing. Um, Duke Leto, he was fucking awesome. The only character that I didn't, I wasn't crazy about at first was Paul Atreides. I forget the actor's name, um, but like I didn't really. I thought he was kind of whiny. Because mm-hmm. the thing I always have a problem with with some of these movies is like they get, they get the powers and they're all like mad and bitter about their powers. And it's like... It's, yeah, it's the, it's the hero's journey where you're the chosen one. Yeah. It's like, why me? Why am I the chosen yeah. one? You're, you're, you're going to be a god and people are going to worship you and they're always like, no, I don't want this power. Dude, if I levitated three inches off the ground, you know how much I'd fucking flip out for like months about that shit. I would could, be so stoked. You could be David Blaine's assistant and go with him on tours. That's what I'm saying. I, I'd do that shit. Mind freak. Uh, that, wait, is that, no, that's, that's... That's Chris Angel. Yeah, they're all the same. Um, they're, none of them are David Copperfield. Anyways. Um, but no, I, I absolutely I absolutely loved it. I thought it was great. Um, I would... I think Amber and I are planning on going to go see it tomorrow night in IMAX. Okay. I was going to invite you to that, but it doesn't sound like you're going to be coming no, with us. No, thank you. Okay. No, I get it. Um, yeah, it was just, it, it, it absolutely astounded me. Mm. I, I'm, I'll be honest with you. Um, and I am so chomping at the bit for the second movie. Um, I mean, I will admit that hopefully the second movie will be better for me. Because I mean, it looks like at this point they've set up the beginning. Maybe the rest will be okay, but I somehow doubt it. As I've tried doing on two occasions now the old one and this one and it's not clicking yeah i mean it's from what i've to listen to the majority of nerds talk about it like they love it Mm -hmm. um to listen to a lot of my friends who have read the book series i get the same thing every single time i've tried starting that book at least three or four times Mm. and i can't get into it um to hear them talk about it, they're like, yeah, it's a little dry in the beginning mm-hmm. because you're taking in a lot of like the stuff that's going on with all the families and everything so, like that. Yeah, all the setup and whatnot. Yeah. But the, apparently once you break through that and it's kind of like, you know, okay, you're eating a pizza and it's like, okay, the first third of this pizza is going to taste 
really bland and terrible. And it's like, then I don't want to eat the damn pizza. Yeah. You know, but I guess it's different with books because you're not subjecting yourself to like mouth horrors. But still, it was just, that's what, the, that's what I walked into this movie expecting. And I got to tell you, I was, I was stunned hmm. like all the way through it. So on a scale from zero to 10, I think I, I'm wrestling between a three and a four. That low? Yes. Um, I mean, that's only... Maybe a four, because I can recognize that... I recognize that it's done well. I just don't give a shit. I mean, that's that's one under true neutral. So that's actually, from what you were saying... It's below average. I'm bored. Oh. And it looks good, and it's acted well. So I can recognize that it's good. But maybe it's got to be a three, because I think we gave um, Night Teeth a four. And if you were like, hey, Nick, do you want to watch Dune in theaters? Or do you want to go watch Night Teeth? You'd be like... Night teeth. Let's 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 do it. So let me let me at least ask you this. Yes. If I said Nick, do you want to go see Dune in the theaters, or do you want to come over to the house and watch Night Teeth on my couch? Are you going to pick Night Teeth because it's on the couch? No, I'm I'm saying if like both were in the theaters, or both were on the couch. Okay. I would rather watch Night Teeth again because that was more. I had more fun watching that movie than Dune. I mean, I, I honestly, I'm surprised. Like I, I've the the entire day I've actually been like talking it up at work, um, <laughs> and then like uh, I was like, yeah, I'm gonna make a recording on it tonight, and I was like, oh, we're just gonna talk about so much stuff, and it's gonna be great. No, I've zero to say about oh, this movie. No, that's perfectly viable. I, I, it's there's a lot of people who are raving about it, but there are a lot of people who don't like it. Um, and it's it seems like Dune's one of those properties where it's like you love it, mm-hmm. or you just could give two shits about it, and that is literally the diametric that's happening right now love it i can't really give a shit about it no so, it, it's a, uh, no it's 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 perfectly understandable um i am super looking forward to a second one um i am super super looking forward to going to see it in the theater tomorrow night because hmm. i feel like i'm going to benefit a lot more by seeing it on the big screen we i mean we've got a big tv in the house and it's a really nice one but like i can't wait to like see those explosions on the attack. Oh, I don't... Whatever. Yeah, I just... I can't wait to see that. <laughs> um, so you didn't... You didn't like any of the stuff with... Um, huge, fat, oily guy? Not really. Floating... Is it Stellan Skarsgård? Uh, something. It's that... Wh- whomever was... Uh, the doctor... The Baron. The doctor and Thor. Yes. Yeah. Yep. I recognize his face. So I'm like, oh, I know that guy. Yeah, Amber, whenever he came on TV the other night, she's like, you know who that is? And I was like, uh... He said two words. She's like, yeah, well, you could hear it in the voice. And then he talked again. I was like, I have no idea. Because all you can see is like the back of his head and shit. I didn't hear, I didn't hear it in the voice. Because I don't think I know him that well as an actor. I mean, I think I could probably place him in two movies. The other one being Good Bit of Hunting. You think he's wearing a fat suit? Yes. See, I mean, that was a flawless fat suit. Usually, yeah, I can pick a fat suit out like that. It's probably CGI, not a fat suit. They do a lot of um, digital makeup and stuff like that nowadays you know because you know like when you watch vision mm. like he's not wearing all that stuff on his head he's just got like a red face with dots and then they go in and cgi his face pretty sure in the behind the scenes thing he was wearing the stupid little hat with like the dots no he's not well he's got his ears out like all that whole cowl thing they shape his head and it's seamless enough that you look at it and go that's pretty good makeup and then no it's cgi mm. yeah, well. they're, they're getting pretty good at hiding that stuff Pretty soon you're just gonna have dudes like walking around in jeans and a t-shirt with like a bunch of dots all over them. Yeah, but I guess that's why I'm not like I watched the movie and sure it was pretty, but I'm not impressed by it anymore because at this point in time we're kind of CGI is thrown at us all the time and you get used to it. So like when you have a big CGI spectacle like with the sandworm coming up and eating everything, I'm like okay, whatever. So I'm surprised you didn't like that part too because like that I thought that part was like dope. No, I and mean, it like leaned over and was just looking at him like. Yeah, kind of want to snag on you, but... No, there was... I think the beginning was kind of going over, setting up all of the characters. So, I guess, should we go to spoilers and actually talk about the movie a little bit? Yeah. Because at this point in time, you've got our opinions. You've got the loves it, and oh, I don't hate it, I just don't care. And I watched it and was bored, and so I think it's a three. If I like Night Teeth better than Dune, 
I think I think Dune is a is a three. That really surprises me that that like you like Night Teeth better. Like li- I can see from now on like every movie. It, I'm just gonna Night Teeth is going to be the watermark, the like the low watermark, and then you put Dune underneath that, and it's kind of like okay, so everything I'm going to rate from Night Teeth now. Well, it's it's not even necessarily that the movie is slow because I mean I've I've watched movies with slow build up and enjoy them. I mean Good Will Hunting is slow. Mm. Um, the one I was talking about so the, the, the other week, um, he never died. That was slow, but I was just super into it. And it so it's not even necessarily that. Oh, it's a character piece, and you have to kind of get to know these characters. I like character pieces too. There's plenty of things where it's all about the character, and there's like maybe action in it. I mean, and I like those movies. Mm-hmm. It's just this one. Whenever they're talking about like ah, oh, the spice flows, and I'm like, <laughs> whatever. Well, I think that was the other things like. So Amber has watched the old school movie more than me, mm-hmm. and she knew she remembered a little bit more about what was going on. So I had a lot of questions. So we are in spoiler territory. Yeah. Um, so spice is basically just worm shit. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Which is because they were taught. They talked about this being a terraforming place, and they discovered that they can't terraform this place because it would ruin the spice. So therefore, they left it as a big dust bowl. Mm. In order to harvest the spice off it, which is needed to for interstellar travel to happen. And see, that was another thing. Like, yeah, I caught little things last night that I thought were really dope. Like mm-hmm. the the big flying space rock with the center in the middle, the, the hole in the center of it, like the ships were flying through. Mm-hmm. Like at first, I couldn't figure out what the deal it was with that. And then, like they had one of the shots where you're like in front of it, looking at it, and the ships are coming through, and you could see like the ring of the planet on one corner of it but when you looked at the top of it there was no fucking planet at the top or the side mm. so it was like those were gates and like it was very subtle like no one said that this was like at least I don't remember them saying that this is like a gate that gets you from point A to point B but like there was a lot of visual stuff that like they were like see this is what this thing does and I I, I respect a movie that does that like yeah. I don't I don't like it when they take you by the hand and they walk you around and go Eh? Mm-hmm. Wait, you recognize that? How about this shit over here? Like, I, I, I like it when you're kind of like in on it with them, and I know for a fact. Mm-hmm. And I don't think we watched one last night, but I know for a fact there's videos out there that's like 85 things you didn't notice in Dune. Oh, yeah. You know? Probably. And we didn't watch anything like that last night, and I know for a fact that there's a lot of fans of Dune that watched this movie and they were like, oh my God. It was like a <laughs> yeah. religious experience. Stuff they caught that I did not. Yeah, like, I'm sure there's plenty of stuff that was like in the book or whatever that they kind of made a nod to. I'm just, I'm never going to read the book either. I want to. I want to at this point. It's just, I don't, I'm, I'm trying to think of other books that I've read to kind of, like I've read The, the Lies of Locke Lamore, which was one of the, probably the one of the best books I've ever read. Hmm. But like the first couple of chapters of it, it's kind of like slow, steady build up. Um, and it was just boring and then it's like, but I guess there's no other torture. Like apparently Amber read the Cimmerillion and supposedly that's supposed to be the most boring book. It's, it's, ever a, his, written. it's a history book. Right. But like, I think she said there was like 30 some odd pages of explaining how trees look and the leaves and all this that's other. Vulcan. Yeah. Like it, it apparently like there was the whole thing where it was like, okay, you're going to, uh, Flesh out your world. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, well, let me dedicate 31 tr- pages to like trees in this specific area of the world and how the leaves look and all that shit. And it was like, okay. It, again, that's got a, that's amazing to someone. Not not to me. No. I mean, I if you're really into it, like I imagine like Stephen Colbert, mm-hmm. he's like ridiculous for Lord of the Rings. Yeah. I'm sure that book is fascinating from page to page. But like... I like watching them. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm more of the opinion of the people on um, Clerks about those movies. I like Star Wars more than T- Lord of the Rings. I, I like the world of Star Wars more than the world of Lord of the Rings. But if it's going to sit down, what's the better trilogy? The original Star Wars trilogy or the Lord of the Rings trilogy? The original it's, Star Wars. It's the, it's the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Yeah, it's Star Wars. Those movies are much better because they are one story that they know they were going to tell. Whereas George Lucas was like... I'm only gonna, I'm only gonna get to tell one movie. So he told this movie, and then they're like, "Make another one." It's like, "Oh, okay. Well, here we go." And then they, it's like, "What's what's gonna happen in this movie? Another Death Star." <laughs> and you can obviously tell that he's retreading old old ideas in this first trilogy, 
and they aren't as cohesive as just sitting down to watch the Lord of the Rings trilogy. So yeah. I like the Star Wars world better, but the Lord of the Rings is just, it's like one movie. It's like a perfect trilogy. Yeah, I mean. And the Star Wars trilogy is one movie and then two tacked on movies that kind of continue the story. Yeah, but they're flawless. Um, flawless? Yeah, I love them. They're e- great. Empire Strikes Back might be flawless, but. Well, I mean, well, so Return, name, the, Return of the Jedi has Ewoks in. So, so name one thing uh, from any of the movies that contradicted something they did in an earlier movie. It's not about contradicting necessarily. It's kind of about retreading. It's like they blow up the Death Star and like we did it. We want we beat the Empire. We we saved the day. And then no, yeah, well they're back and they're building another Death Star. Yeah, it's just it's just Baker it's, Death Star. It, that, that sucks. That's so bad. It's not bad. It was good. Like uh, there was so many other little things they did. It's well, if you were doing that as a trilogy, like we know we're getting three movies. Right. The Death Star doesn't get blown up in the first movie. It gets blown up in the third movie. But I mean, okay, I see where you're coming at. Yes. I see. I see what you're getting at. But mm-hmm. when the thing you take down in the first movie is a gigantic fucking moon that like blows up planets. That's why like, you don't where take do you... it down in the first movie. But yeah, but like, where do you go from there? So it's, I agree with you. They, they did the one movie, it made a ton of money, and they were like, let's make another movie. Yeah. I mean, Which, it's fine. Like, those movies are good. It's just yeah. as a cohesive trilogy, like, if you're going all three of these movies working together, I think The Lord of the Rings works better. Okay. I mean, I, I'll, I'll agree with you that Star Wars is better. Um, but as a world, like if we were to, if we were to sit down and be like, make it, make like a D and D campaign or whatever. And it's going to be set in the star Wars world or set in the Lord of the Rings world. Be like, well, let's do star Wars. I want to be a Jedi. I want to mess some things up with a lightsaber. Yeah. Or do you want to sit down and we're going to sit down and watch the star Wars trilogy? Or do you want to sit down and watch the Lord of the Rings trilogy? Star like, well, Wars. Let's, let's watch Lord of the Rings. Star Wars. No. Cause I mean, star Wars has baggage. <laughs> um, what do you mean baggage? Um, the, f- Three prequel trilogy, the prequel trilogy. No, well, okay, whoa, 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 let's not get crazy. Uh, all the Disney stop, stop, and... stop, no, stop. It's, we didn't say anything about watching nope. episodes one through three. No, it's just a three, but now they have, now they got, now they got baggage. And you got to know that, like, sorry, this is a Dune thing, but still, um, when people talk about um, Han Solo, like, sitting down and telling people, like, oh, I did the Kessel Run in 12 parsecs, and then Obi-Wan looks at him like, oh, okay, um, Han Solo is lying. He's making up stuff. Mm-hmm. And then in Solo, they're like, no, he did it in 12 parsecs. Here's how. He said he did it in 12 parsecs. He wouldn't lie. He's on Solo. It's like, no, he was um, he was a scoundrel. He was talking out of his ass. He said, it's like, oh, I, I can uh, swim the English Channel in three leagues. I'm like, what the, what, is, what does that mean? That means I'm, I'm talking out of my ass. I don't know what I'm talking about at all. Okay. And then for other movies to go back and canonize his bullshit to make him not a liar is dumb. They don't get what Han Solo was. I think they even said something about rounding up or down or something well, like that. It's he was lying. He he said he said distance when it should have been done in speed. And I think he like, took shortcuts. Well, he was talking about well, people canonized it because he made a lie, and they're making the lie work. That is how someone charismatic gets a lie past you. Is they lie to you, and your brain goes, "Oh, okay, I see. I see what he's talking about." He said distance, but what he meant was he was flying so close to the black holes that his ship was actually going faster. Was it done? That's what people say, but thought, it's wrong. He thought, was lying. <laughs> I thought he was like flying through like dead space, like dead areas of the Kessel Run. Like if you had a trail that zigzagged back and forth, that was like point A to point B. I thought, and like the rest of the trail was, or the rest of the outside of the trail was knives. Mm-hmm. I thought he was like running through the knives to basically get to the it's, end of the it's, thing. It's a, it's a, the Kessel Run is just so it was so full of crap that. I should go ahead and say I've only seen Solo one time, so I'm doing this. And I've done. I've seen it twice at least. I'm talking about a memory full of weed um, in but the past. Was, so well, even in the last they escaped the blood, the black hole that had the creature that was coming out of it, like the space Cthulhu, and they they he got out of the black hole with the with the by throwing the raw spice directly into the and you know what I didn't need to see that I didn't need to see that at all. So. I will just go ahead and say that I was talking about episode four, five, and six. Yes. But that is in my brain now. So when yeah. I go back and watch it and know that people have canonized all that stuff. And and plus, I can't watch... You can't just watch the original trilogy anymore. You've got to watch the edited version of the trilogy where the Panthers are walking in the background. And you've got like all that kind of unnecessary CGI. Hayden Christensen hanging out instead of the actor yeah. for Darth Vader. 
Yeah, it's okay. I, I'll see your point on that. So but. I'm just I'm saying it's got baggage, and like Lord of the Rings is just great. And you could try to say that the Hobbit is trail is is baggage, which that didn't. It could have been two movies and not had so much weird stuff going on in it. But I guess I just don't notice as much stuff because like that those movies, all the movies were good. Mm-hmm. But it's like when I sit down and watch a three hour movie, if I can feel it in my ass and back when I get up at the end of it and like I have to pee mm-hmm. and like the last 30 minutes of the movie all I'm thinking about is please roll credit so I can get up and take a leak. Mm-hmm. To me that's not like a great movie, like an amazing movie like um, I think Endgame was three hours or was it um, the mm-hmm. one before that? Infinity War. Wonderful. Infinity War Wonderful. I think it was like three hours. But like that like movie. Long. Yeah, like Infinity War. I'm t- Dude, I was perfectly fine. Like, I drank three slushies before that movie. Mm. And, like, I did not think about using the bathroom one time. And by the end of that movie, I was just like, oh, man, that was so good. Oh, God, those people were so mortified. You see that kid in the front? He was crying. I have to pee now. I'll be right back. You know, it was just kind of like, it was one of those things. But um, I guess the whole point of all that was, is that the Frank Herbert wrote, like, all of Dune. Mm-hmm. Apparently, there's, like, a ton of books. Um, he's gone now. I think his son has taken over. And he's pulled in, I guess, somebody else that would, that knows a lot of, about Frank Herbert's world. And apparently there's a lot of stuff that's like still written down about Dune. Um, I think that Frank Herbert would be, would be proud of that movie. Like, I, I think, I just, I, honestly, The Shields look ten times better than it did back in the 1980s. But of course they would because it's yeah, 2021. I mean, that's, that must be expected, right? But, like, uh, I love the way The Shields looked. Anything with Josh Brolin here lately has been fucking killing it for me. I love Josh Brolin. It, like, it had a bunch of actors that I just like. Okay. You don't like Bran? Who's Bran? Josh Brolin. Oh, he was fine. He's whatever. I, ca- I, I didn't care about a single character in this movie. Really? Not not. There's not one standout character. I mean, there's cool stuff. I liked like when they were in the ship and... Um, she was like doing the sign. Someone was like, "No, use your voice. Like, speak in a higher pitch." And then, like the second she pulled, like they, he got her to pull the gag off. She was just controlling the people. I mean, it was cool. That was a pretty cool part. But more of that, please. Less yeah. less of the uh, five hour setup for them to like. I mean, how much they were given a planet by the emperor. Hmm. They show up. And it's like, oh man, this planet is not running as smoothly as smoothly as we thought. He hmm. set us up to fail. Then they get attacked. And then it's time for them to go out in the desert. Like, oh, shit, we're, we're on our own now. That was two hours. Yeah, but then they find out that the reason that they got attacked is because the Emperor basically led them there. Yeah, you could do that in like 30 minutes, 45 minutes. Yeah, but I mean, you don't... If, if a guy's trying to talk you down an alley to basically rob you, you don't want him to be like, yes, yeah, come in the alley. And then the second you walk in like to the mouth of it, he's like, eh. He, he's got to get you to the back of the alley before you find out you're trapped. 40, I mean, that's 45 minutes for a setup. Is still generous. It feels like the setup of this movie was an hour and a half, like two hours, and then it started to pay off with the actual, like what's going to be the plot of the movie. Well, I think it said, like, also in the title scene at the beginning of it, it was like Dune Part 1. Yes. And Knowing that this was going into a Part 1, I would have hated this movie if it didn't tell me it was a Part 1. Mm. No, going into this and knowing that it's only half a movie, and to not get a conclusion, knowing that most of it was set, was a setup, I would have been pissed. But at least knowing that it was a half a movie... Do we know that it's a... Well, do we know it's a half a movie? Do we know that they're not going to like... I don't know if they're going to trilogy. They're going to like Harry Potter. I don't think they were going to. You don't think they'll Harry Potter uh, the last book out of it and like get two movies out of it? I don't know. Or three? Right. But like the original idea behind the Harry Potter, the last movie was basically it was supposed to be one movie, then they turned it into two two movies. Just because there was so much, so much to it. And then they were going to do Dune and two, and now this one's like done way better than I think anybody anticipated. From what I've heard, it's going to be two movies. So the last if, movie if, is if, going if, to be Baron Harkon and just like rubbing that oil shit all over his body and just staring at the camera. Spice. Mm. If they decide to change it, I mean, from what I know, it's it, the plot, it, the plan is for, for there to be two movies. I'm down. I can't wait. Mm. Um, I can wait. Yeah. I mean, as far as like spoilery stuff, like you know, the stuff that really stood out to me, the attack I thought was was awesome. The way that they that um, uh, Duke Leto like saw that flash because he, he was like having trouble sleeping. He saw that flash on the wall and then he could see that signal beacon and he mm-hmm. was just like something's not right. Um, there were turns that I did see coming, like the doctor Amber and I were talking about it. I had seen the movie 
way back in the day. Mm -hmm. And Amber was like, I can't remember which one's the bad guy. And she's like, I think this person's the bad guy. She's like, or it's the doctor. I said, I'm I'm pretty sure it's the doctor because that guy is shady as fuck. Mm -hmm. So, and sure enough. um, And as they talk about like the Harkonnens in the beginning, they're like, they're brutal. They're evil. You've never seen another monster like them. Like, what made that guy think he was going to hold up the deal? And of course he knew that they weren't going to because he put that poison tooth in Homeboy's mouth. Yeah. You know, so... Yeah, it was. There was a lot of stuff that I really dug. I thought the visuals were amazing. I thought the story was great. And this is coming from a person who watched the original movie, tried to read the books, and was bored to tears with the first movie. So like, I'm, I'm with the first movie of what you are with this this movie. Um, well, I, I would say the first movie was boring, except I don't remember. I just remember being bored, and I can't remember if my brother and I turned it off or not. Well, we found out that that's that one's also on. HBO. So yeah. we're going to go back and watch that one too. <laughs> Have fun. It's just I remember that movie was disgusting. Like at least the Baron Harkonnen in this one, he was like laying in the motor oil and everything like that. But like the, I remember the one in the old school movie, he had like boils that were popping on his face the entire time and like they were just disgusting. And I couldn't I couldn't understand what the deal was. And I don't know if they just skipped over the whole thing of like Duke Leto doing the poison tooth thing and he was already getting the boils and stuff like that because of the poison tooth. I don't know. Um, I, could, I literally could not tell you. And then, like, the entire time that I was watching... See, at the beginning of this, I was going to, like, do something stupid and been like, uh, so, you know, I really love Sting in this movie. I thought he was great. Mm-hmm. And uh, Agent Dale Cooper was fantastic. Um, but, like, it was... it was, I, I, It's just one of those things where you think you're getting one thing, and I totally got another, and I was just super appreciative of it. I don't usually gush on movies like this. I'm not hard on movies because... I usually at least try to find like the silver lining in most movies. Like I used to be like super critical of flicks. And then I found out that I was just kind of ruining movies for myself because when I walked in, like kind of ready to sit in judgment of them. But now I try mm-hmm. to see the art for what it is. I try to relax a little bit more. And I just, it, it was one of those movies where it was kind of like, okay, this is the story and this is what you're getting. And then I completely relaxed. And then what they laid out in front of me, I don't think there was much talking while the movie was going on. Like Amber would explain certain things to me, like certain things would happen. And I'm like, I don't, I don't get that. And she's like, well, this happened with this family and this is what's happening with this. And I'm like, okay, I get it. Um, and that was the other thing about watching it at home. Mm -hmm. Like I, I don't have to lean over to him and be like, what was that all about? And she's whispering it back to me and I'm missing more stuff. So my favorite part of it, watching it at home is about 45 minutes and minutes into it. I could just be like, all right, pick up my phone and check. All right, back to the movie. No, you could do that in the theater too. That no, I wouldn't. I would not do that in the theater. A lot of people do. I so know. apparently, I'm, if I'm, everybody else does it, it's okay for you to do it. I'm too. not a lot of people. I if I'm in a theater, like I, I shut up and I'm there to watch it. Well, unless unless we're the only two people in the theater, and then we'll be like, hey, let's laugh at this movie. And well, we'll be if you're the person that like basically turns on their fucking uh, light on their phone to like look at something in your lap, um, that's bright. Yeah, just go ahead and turn this video off because we don't want you watching these videos because <laughs> um, I want to strangle those people so bad. But, um, yeah, uh, I see what you're saying. I mm-hmm. completely understand where you're coming yeah. from. I know you said that you thought this was going to be a 10-minute video, but we always... Uh, well, to be fair, if we hadn't talked about Star Wars and Lord of the Rings, I would have tapped out much sooner. No, that's... that's it's like, what do I want to talk about with Dune? Anything but Dune. Right, no. So, in summation, uh, I give it... Nine out of ten, or uh, nine out of between zero to ten. Just because we have five right in the middle, so five is nice and nice and average movie. Which yeah. average doesn't mean bad. Yeah, it just means it's you know. It's a you watch. I it. didn't love it. Didn't hate it. You it was watch, just you know, okay. You, you watch it, you enjoy it, and then yeah. you'll probably never think about it again. Or maybe you will occasionally, like in three months, you'll go back and watch a five. I tell you, like it, three years ago, I watched this movie and it was five. I know what I'm getting. Then. Yeah. And watch it again. Yeah, or something like the next movie comes out and you're like, I don't remember that. And then you go back and watch the movie yeah. just because of something. Um, which is always good when additional movies give you additional replay value yeah. in the older movies. But um, yeah, I give it a solid 9 out of 10. I would give it a 3. Okay. Well, that's been our review on Dune. I'm sure we could talk more on it, um, but there's oh, just... One of us could. Okay. Well, then it, if you have any questions, concerns, if there's anything you want to point out to me that down in the comments... Things that I might like, um, because I got to tell you, every single character loved Duke Leto, Leto, uh, loved Paul. Like, 
I loved Lady Jessica. They were just Duncan. They were all just great. I thought mm-hmm. they were great. I've always had concerns with Jason Momoa, but honestly, he's come a long way as an actor because like, he's a lot more... I, I guess I did find it funny that Aquaman was Dune Man now. Yeah. Well, it's just... I, he was kind of acting like Aquaman, though. Hey, bro, what's up? <laughs> hey, you're getting so big. Yeah, no, like I get it, but... Um, yeah, it's, if there's any questions, anything you want to point out, put it down in the comments. Although I do have a question for the comments. So, as a trilogy, what's better? The original Star Wars trilogy or the Lord of the Rings trilogy? It's Star Wars. <laughs> uh, it's Lord of the Rings. Now, The Empire Strikes Back might be a better movie than the other, than any of the three Lord of the Rings movies. But once you tack on the other two movies. Yeah, but see, like, you're making my point for me. Is that you said... That one movie is good? <laughs> That all three of the movies are good. Return. There are two and a half good movies in Star Wars, and there's three amazing movies in Lord of the Rings. So what's the half movie between episodes four, five, and six? Uh, six. It's like you've got the Jabba scene at the beginning, which is amazing, yeah. and then you've got Ewoks in space battle again. Have you ever seen the Death Star blow up? Have you ever How seen about again? Have you ever seen teddy bears tank down a tank? That shit was awesome. No, it wasn't. It was fucking guerrilla warfare. They were on their <laughs> planet, and those dudes. Fuck their shit up. That's you know what? Not gonna argue about it here. Um, get in the comments. Yeah, get in the comments. And we don't own that line either. And don't sue us. We just like that guy. What's his name? That's a good question. Yeah, you said it one one of the particular. I know it's been Brendan. Brendan. Yeah, from a college rumor. Yeah. And yeah, I I usually know his name, but right now. Uh, it's my brain's full of dune don't sue us that's what we're trying to get to (laughs) um anyways uh yeah uh like comment subscribe if it feels right i'm not telling you what to do you're a grown-ass person and if you're not go to bed um and apparently it doesn't even matter what time it is go to bed yeah just i mean i get upset when i think about all the naps i didn't take when i was younger if you think about like look at us we're old i would so love to be in bed right now we should call this geriatric reviews ain't nobody (laughs) watching this shit um Thanks, Mom, and four other friends at work, and the three other friends we knew between us uh, for watching these videos. Um, but yeah, no, um, I think we've said all the things that can be said. Yeah, and I guess next time we'll pick a new movie that could be watched from home. Do we have an idea of what it? So we know the Eternals is coming out. No, that's not going to be at home. I want no. like for for ni- for a nice co video. We need, we'll have to peruse Netflix or HBO Max or whatever and see what strikes. Strikes are fancy because you never you never know. Maybe there's a hidden gem. Right. Um, maybe it's night teeth. Maybe it's Dune for you. Who knows? Could be night teeth too. Night teeth. Night teeths. Teeths. Yes. All right. Oh, thanks for watching. Bye.